who is the pound for pound most important player in the Premier League right now. So what I did with my good friend Nabade from the No Ratings podcast is we put together 20 names, the most important player for every single Premier League club. But we had to get rid of four names as quickly as possible to get ourselves a 16 person bracket. So four players missed out, I'm afraid. Sheffield United's Gus Hamer, our knee of Nottingham Forest, Willian and Trafford. So that left us with 16 names for our bracket and the first tie was a Merseyside derby. Check it out. When it comes to this 16, what we've done is we've seeded the sort of the, the league table to the players. So as you can see, Salah, that is an unbelievable first round pick, by the way. Salah up against Decore. And the reason for that is Everton are currently at the bottom of the uh, available players that we've got in terms of the, uh, the club that they play for and the league table. So that's how we've worked it out to try and make it as fair as possible. What we need to do is decide on importance. Now, importance is massively different to being the best player. OK, take that in. Now, <laughs> Nave, this is a good one for you to kick off with. Obviously, as a Liverpool fan, you've got Salah, who has scored, I think, 45 percent of the goals for Liverpool this year. But then you've got Decore who, in terms of Sean Dyche and his style of play, is very, very important. He's Everton's top scorer with six goals. He's got the third most key passes in the squad. So how important is Decore to this side? Or is this an easy one where Salah has to go through? Or And is Salah actually that important? <laughs> Can't believe I just said that. We have to think about the question you said here. Who's the most important to the team? My instinct says... And I know who you're going to say, yeah, but Liverpool have been all right without Salah. They've been all right because they've got goal scorers. But in terms of how they've played, without him, they're, a, I would say, a shadow of the side they could be. Now, Decore on the flip side at Everton, I think Everton have a style of play that complements Decore, but equally can complement Harrison and McNeil, them two obviously play either side. So I think Decore is more replaceable. Salah is irreplaceable. And therefore, by popular demand, in my own brain, Mo Salah makes the most sense to go through. I cannot believe that this is the first one that's come through. Salah against Decore. This is why there's no other There's no other debate where Decore and Salah, we're even getting to this point of the conversation. <laughs> you just put through Salah, don't you? Because of the goals that he scores. Yeah. What's a bigger question? Like, is it more of a disaster to get relegated or is it more of a disaster to not to not win the league? If you took one of these guys out from their teams for the duration of the season... Who then becomes more important? You would forget about Decore pretty quickly. I don't think you forget about Salah that quickly because he is just so overwhelming. Like the output is so overwhelming. So I think it's I think it's Salah. He's through. Next up, Pascal Gross against Kieran Trippier. How do you feel about Trippier? I think there's going to be a few here where there are other contenders. The reason we put Trippier forward is just that in terms of sort of attacking output, he annihilates everyone in the squad for shot creating actions. He's got 91. So one name you said at the start there, is there someone else? I would have actually had Pope in here because I was, I was thinking in my head, I feel like Newcastle have conceded a lot of goals since the Vrack has come in and they have conceded an awful lot. 3-4-3, three, three, you do the maths. 1-3-4-3-1-4. Three, three, That's a lot of goals conceded. conceded. But in terms of this Trippier, Pascal Gross, mate, I think Trippier, if Livermento comes in, the style changes for sure because Trippier's uh, not a sort of box-to-box -box type uh, wing back. I think... I would say Liverpool is more of a wing back than a right back per se. Whereas Pascal Gross, man, like this guy is the most underrated player in the league. I don't know how many times I can scream this out to people. He played right wing back in that early phase of Deserby, then played as a right back in the next set phase. He's played as a six and a 10. He's played off the right hand side. Honestly, I don't think you can replace Pascal Gross. I, I'm struggling. I don't want to look too far forward, but I'm struggling to take Gross out at any given point. So th this is an unbelievable stat, right? So he's created 102 shot creating actions. The next highest is Jao Pedro, is 61. <laughs> that is crazy, utterly crazy. I think it's Pascal Gross. I think that's an easy one. Yeah, yeah, Pascal Gross goes through 110 percent to get my boy through. Uh, Ollie Watkins up against Elise. I think this is an easy one. Has to be Watkins for me. Elise has been missing for a lot of the season. He is special. Like, he's no doubt he's their best player. He's probably their most important player, but I still think they can function and survive without him. I think Watkins has got a real chance of going really far in this. Yeah, yeah. I think Elise is a phenomenal footballer. I think him and Eze actually share the crown at Palace as their most important players. But I think the fact that Watkins has got 10 goals, 10 assists, I think he's the first player in Europe's top five leagues to achieve that. Um, and the fact that 
a lot of what Villa do goes through him. I know obviously they play via Paul Torres, obviously at left centre back. But I think if you if you lose Ollie Watkins, forget the goals that he says, you lose that player. They can't play the way they do. Uh, so I think this is a clear cut. Watkins is smoking Elise to the next round. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Right, Vicario and Solanke again, tricky with Spurs, and we and we've kind of gone with. Bit of a hipster's choice there with Vicario. God, I get it. Goalkeepers are important. Are they that important? And you could put forward someone like Madison. But Vicario has come in and, and, and the way that Spurs play has been unbelievable, hasn't it? If if he's not a Spurs this season, I know they've conceded a lot of goals. That's more style of play. But we saw how Hugo Lloris got on last season. Vicario, in my opinion, was their most important signing. Forget Madison. Forget everyone else. They had to find a keeper that wasn't making mistakes every other game. Obviously, now, if you cross it on his head, he's in trouble. But generally speaking, I think he is one of the standout players this season. The other guy in this bracket is stressing me out because <laughs> you know how I feel about Solanke. And I still feel certain biases against him. Is that, that's a Liverpool, is that a Liverpool thing? Just because he didn't do it at Liverpool? No, no, no. <laughs> Liverpool have had a lot of failed players. I really like Solanke as a footballer, but I, I, I'm also trying to pick guys who are going to go far in a competition. And I don't think Solanke goes far in a competition. I think now he's... Because I was like, I was putting up the idea that he might not be in the, in the top 16. But once he's in there, like the next highest goal scorer after him is three goals. He's got 13 goals. <laughs> Only 10 players have scored for Bournemouth this year. So he is integral. I think what kills Solanke here is is that Bournemouth aren't actually playing for anything anymore. People are going to go mad in the comments about that. I get it. I will speak to what you said at the start. You said before we had to kick players out that Solanke was in your mind. How the hell is Solanke getting through now? Yeah, fair enough. All right, Vicario makes it through. I don't feel great about that. I don't know why. I think it's just because it's me and you talking about <laughs> Solanke more than anything. <laughs> okay. Wow. Right. Oh, I think this is your first shock. I think it's Barkley. Barkley up against Saliba. You could put forward Saka or Declan Rice being crucial. I guess it is, you know, there is a title charge in that. But Luton have got the chance to stay in the Premier League. No one gave him a chance. And Ross Barkley has been absolutely reborn. And they have been reborn with him in the side. They are miles, miles better with him in the team than without him. It's night and day. Turns of passes into the final third. He's got 71. Next highest is Amari Bell with 46. 26 of the 32 goals have sc- they've scored this season have been when Barkley has been on the pitch. And he's only played 15 games. For the run-in, Barkley is utterly integral. I get it with Saliba, but you have Tommy Asu if you can get him fit. You've got Ben White. You've got Kivior. <laughs> okay, I'm ruining my argument here. But I think I'm gonna go, I go Barkley on this one. It's not the same. The guys you mentioned are not the same. You you gave Barkley a shout. Let me speak on Saliba's behalf here. When Arsenal lost Saliba last season, the entire system capitulated. Arsenal fans, if you say the word holding around them, I'm holding my bag, they run for their hills because Rob Holding, unfortunately for him, was bought in for Saliba. And that's a massive task. Saliba is probably, I would say, one of maybe two or three of the most integral players in the league for their teams. It's obviously, again, the debate of if you lose Barkley, who do they have? I completely hear that. Barkley has had a breakout season. But I do think there's the football purist in you that wants Barkley to go far because he's like a failed youth product kind of guy. And, oh my God, Barkley's doing it for Luton and the story's nice. But listen, I'm here to speak about facts. If Arsenal lose Saliba, they do not compete for the title. We've seen it. There's a sample size that proves that you're a data guy, James. The drop-off is enormous if you take Barkley out of that team, though. It's such a drop. I think relegation is it, relegation is more life life or death. So if that's the case, then the importance for me starts weighing towards those players because you're out of the league. Okay, you didn't win the league, but you're out of the league. Do you know what I mean? I get I, I get I'm probably talking utter nonsense here, but that's why I'm struggling with this, <laughs> and that's why I think for me it's Barkley. I'm happy to go to the chat if you want to go to the chat. On the basis of this, Barkley's going all the way. I think he's got a chance. <laughs> okay, Barkley it is. Barkley makes it through. Come on, son. We have our first shock. Saliba crashes out. <laughs> Arsenal fans are going to be fuming. Right. Bowen and Cunha. Cunha's been, Cunha's been wonderful. He's been absolutely brilliant. But I think other people have contributed at the top end of the pitch. Whereas Bowen has been all on his own up there. Yeah, Bowen's clear. Rodri and Tony. I'm going to let you speak. You speak. You speak. Because I, I don't know. Maybe, I'm, maybe we, I'm sort of influencing this too much. 
We are not doing this again. We just lost the Libra. Let me clarify, we just lost the centre-back that Arsenal needed for them to win the league. Without Rodri, I mean, the stats speak for themselves. They are useless. 12 played, 6 wins, 6 losses. They lose half of their games without Rodri. Brentford were without Tony for practically the entirety of this season. And you would assume that a team of that level of quality would be further down the bottom of the table. And yes, Tony is a wonderful player and crucial to Brentford. I absolutely hear it. But look at the stats. This Pep Guardiola's Manchester City team cannot cope without Rodri. They've lost 50% of their games without Rodri. If Tony goes through here, James, <laughs> I, I might have to walk out. I, I cannot see Tony go through. This is closer than people are going to say, again, because at the moment, Brentford are flirting heavily with relegation and they need to score goals and he's going to be a big part of that, as he has been in previous seasons. The question comes down to, do you think Brentford survive without Tony? Yeah, I think they've had other injuries that have impacted them as well. And Buemo has been injured, et cetera, et cetera. If we take that out of uh, sort of, we go, okay, if they're fit and Tony still isn't in the side, they stay up. I think it would be close. I think they'd find a way and they'd figure it out like they have for the bulk of the season. And they've had such such struggle with um, with injuries this year and they've started to play differently as well. So I think Tony's crucial, but I think you're right. It has to be Rodri. Because the thing I'm struggling with Rodri is like, if he goes out, who's like, who's playing? Who's playing in that position? Because Phillips has gone as well now. Like, R- Rodri's, Rodri's got a real chance here. Okay. Fernandez and Cole Palmer. Good matchup. Oh, Chelsea are in disarray right now. And Man United have been in dis- disarray this year as well. So this is a great matchup. But, like, in terms of getting them out of it, of the problems that they're having, is Cole Palmer more likely to do that? Or is Bruno Fernandez more likely to do that between now and the end of the season? I know Man United got some players coming back. But Chelsea, I mean, and again, Chelsea should be better than they are. It's tough. I'll ask you the question. If you took Palmer out of that Chelsea side, where do Chelsea end up this season, obviously? If you took Bruno Fernandes out of that Manchester United side, where do Manchester United end up? I think Fernandes gets it moving more than Palmer. I get that Palmer's been brilliant. I get it. But I think in terms of sort of like force of will, they've got a different style. They're both very different in terms of their style. Mm. 59 key passes for Bruno Fernandes. Cole Palmer has been great. In a team that's been awful. My, my gut says Fernandez is the more important player. Because like, who's creating outside of him through the middle? This is the thing, right? We're obviously talking about this season. Bruno Fernandez actually hasn't played to the level that he needs to be to actually impact the games the way we're suggesting he does. And so therefore, I think because he's not played to that level and they are still in the situation they're in, yes, if he was playing better, they'd be higher at the table. But the fact that even while he's playing this way, they're still actually okay or probably where they need to be at five points or fourth, I think, or fifth. Whereas for Palmer and Chelsea, if Cole Palmer wasn't in this side, Chelsea are even closer to the relegation battle. Who would you say, though, if you have to pick what someone? Palmer. Fernandez is crucial, though. That said, the chat has spoken and Palmer's through. Okay, I think in terms of what it looks like, the optics are Palmer, but the tr- I'm not sure the truth is Palmer. We're into the no. we're into the court oh, no. I've just, just seen the first matchup. This is the thing with the bracket; it gets worse. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I'll oh, give you: no. you can start from the bottom and go up, or you can start from, <laughs> you can start from the top and go down. <laughs> what would you like to do? Where do you want to go? Let's let's start from the bottom. Sorry, I can't do the top. Let's let's start at the bottom. Right, Palmer versus Rodri. It's Rodri for me. It's funny, isn't it? it was, uh, normally, I would imagine Man City to struggle with something like this. But again, there is no replacement for him. Like, who is the replacement? Kovacic? Like, just Bernardo Silva start playing there? Like, you have to massively change so much. And actually, if he gets injured, they are in huge trouble, aren't they? Yes. As I said earlier, a lot of people said Stones will drop in there, but Stones' injury record is unreliable. I also don't think Stones can play as a six without Rodri around. I think they've only played together in that position uh, a very it's long Rodri, isn't it? time of the season. Yeah, it's got to be. He's okay, Rodri's in. Rodri's through. Start with an easy one there. It's interesting. Yeah, pull up. Palmer just pushed to the side there. Bowen and Barkley. Oh, I think this is really interesting because we've said earlier, if you lose Bowen, West Ham don't have anyone. And we're saying if Barkley isn't at Luton, Luton don't have any, anyone. Then we're saying it's more detrimental for a club to go down than it is for a club to win the league. But equally for West Ham to achieve Champions League or Europa League, I think is equally as important as it is for Luton to stay up. So this is like, this is the 
probably the most even of all of them where I, I'm really struggling to split what I prefer. What I would say is, on that note, West Ham are 10 points off fourth, eight points off fifth at the time of recording. So although I think the drop off and the loss is is equal, I'm going to have to, I'm again playing the relegation card here. If If Bowen is injured, West Ham finish mid table. If Barkley gets injured, Luton go down. So it's Barkley for me. Oh, I don't like this relegation debate. Barkley goes all the way if this debate continues. I have to find a stop to this. Uh, Barkley can go through now, but I'm working. Come on, boy. Come on, Ross. Come on, Stan. I'm taking you to the final, boy. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm just seeing who he's got next. Oh, God. Right. Vicario and Watkins. Again, Watkins for me, very easily. I think... The way that Spurs are going to play is going to be the way they're going to play. I think, you, yeah, okay, that goalkeeper might not be comfortable, the, the guy that would come in. Like, look at the evidence of having not having Vicario. Spurs, get their goalkeepers get ruined and have been for years. They can't deal without Vicario. It's Watkins for me. I think it, it is. Like you, to win games, you've got to score goals. And it's a great Villa team. They've got the chance to win the Conference League and get into the mm. to the Champions League. Or even win the whole thing. Am I right, guys? Am I right? You've just said a line there that's going to win me the next debate. So please, Watkins, in you go, fella. The next one just got very interesting. Right. Pascal Gross up against Mohamed Salah Watkins to face Watkins in the semifinals. I'll I'll just say one sentence. In the previous debate, you said you've got to score goals to win games. One of these guys scores a lot of goals. That's all I'm saying. I think in a Brighton team, he makes them purr. And did I like his assist against Palace? Was like for such a short pass, it was gorgeous. But he's not Salah. He's not Salah. I think it's an easy one. This actually, I don't think that's difficult to be honest. I think say Gross comes out. You've got you know getting Ciso fit, Buenanote. You've got Beliba. You've got Gilmore. You've got a lot of talent. Yeah, it's Salah. Salah's yeah. through. Same final son. What is happening here? What is going on? John, a lot of people in the chat <laughs> saying this is a stinker. This is a stinker of a bracket. I don't understand why they're saying it's a stinker of a bracket. I think this is great content. Well put together. Okay. <laughs> right. Let's go Salah Watkins. <laughs> oh, it's a belter. <laughs> oh, what's happening here? What's happening? Now, we've got the same argument for both players now. It's that Spider-Man meme. <laughs> they're both looking at each other. <laughs> you scored the goals or I scored the goals. <laughs> I think it's Watkins. <laughs> I think it's Watkins because, okay, they're very disappointing recently against Arsenal without Salah. Understand that. But I think if you have Sabozlai playing in that game or Harvey Elliott playing in that game instead of Gravenberg, I think you would have been a lot more impressive. And I also think playing Arsenal is not playing every other team in the league. You're going to play, most teams you're going to be able to bulldozer because you have a lot of attacking talent to replace that along the front line. As we've seen, like, let's not get stuck in the recency bias of the Arsenal defeat. Liverpool have been fantastic banging in goals. He is world-class, though. He is a cheat code if you want to win the league. But Watkins has been unbelievable. Exactly. But James, James, I watched a video of yours about cheat codes. Why are you turning it on me? Why are you trying to turn it on me? Just make your point. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I can only win this point if I make you agree with me, I feel. So I've got to get you on side. I feel... In the Premier League, because of the high level that Man City have set and a high level that Arsenal are at and a high level Liverpool are at, the only way you win the league is by having these cheat codes, as referred to by one James Lawrence Orcott on his YouTube channel, uh, which boasts many followers and many believers in what you say, including myself. And so therefore, I think by your own metric of cheat codes, Mo Salah in a 38-game season can propel Liverpool and this has happened where Liverpool squeezed into fourth, can propel Liverpool three or four places up the league table because he is of that level of quality. And I think in this day and age, to win the league, you have to beat the teams around you, which is exactly what Arsenal are doing currently. City have done it over the years. And when Liverpool won the league, they beat City that season and Salah was integral. I just think you cannot be one of the two or three best players in the league and just because you have other options, be like, ah, but you know, it'll be fine. That's my theory. He's a cheat code. Yeah, I'm not having it. I think, I think, the, I think depth of oh. quality around <laughs> you, I think depth of quality around you in this debate matters. That's why Barkley's got as far as he has. 
Okay, say say you haven't got Salah for the for the whole season. Where do Liverpool finish? I mean, there was the season Liverpool finished fourth, and they should have finished tenth, and Salah got them to fourth. Um, but just like, cleanse your mind, like, cleanse your mind. Take a fourth. second, debate, debate. Cleanse your mind. Okay. Right. Do you just think of that squad? Think of the players that you've got there, and just just take Salah out, and you're doing your predictions before the season. Where where are you going? I think we'll finish. Finish that sentence. Fifth. If I do the same with Villa without Watkins, so they've got John Duran up front for the whole season. Diaby, if you could you could stick him up there, maybe. They're nowhere near where they are now. They're still sort of ninth best, are they? Context here. They shouldn't be fourth. This is an outlier of a season. Why are they so, fourth? Don't get me started on these <laughs> things. This is a whole other right. conversation. My, vo- my vote is Watkins. Your vote is Salah, I, I would suggest. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We go to the chat. Yeah, let me promise you guys watching this. If Watkins makes it through, I sure as hell I'm not letting him win. I'll let Barkley win over Watkins. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> the people have spoken by a landslide. Ollie Watkins has made his way through to the final. It's quite possibly the most important player in the Premier League. But... Who will he face in the final? Let's find out as we head to our second semi-final debate. Ross Barkley of Luton Town up against Rodri of Manchester City. This is where I feel like we get to the end of the road for Barkley because I think the style of play, he is so important to sort of give him the ball, move it on and move it through the thirds. But they are big on crossing the ball a lot as well. But Rodri, for how complex Man City play, and it's funny that no one's really spoken about it. I, maybe it's because it's only a week or so since Phillips has gone. But without Rodri, they, uh, we've said it a couple of times now, they are in massive trouble. Or, or have they got enough quality to get around it? I don't think they have. I don't think they have. Like They've got around the De Bruyne situation and Haaland situation to still be in the title race. But I think the moment you lose Rodri, not only, I think, do you lose, like you said, to play a complex system, but whoever comes in, Kovacic cannot do the same job Rodri does. Calvin Phillips could do it in terms of profile, but not to the level. And I think that's the key detail here that like there is probably profiles you can chuck in that position where Rodri plays. No one plays it as intelligently as him in the world and no one does it as well as him in the world in terms of his quality in possession and out of possession. And then also there's that little thing that he's added to his game over the last couple of years in terms of like clutch moments that he comes up with on a regular basis. Um, and I think it's a disgrace that Barkley's got this far. Have you had so... a bloody good run, Ross? You've had a bloody good run. <laughs> The Saliba anger is going to be real. It's going to be so real. <laughs> Rodri makes it through to the final. Don't think we need to say any more. Sometimes you get into traffic. You have to go down different routes. But the important thing is you get where you want to be. Okay? And I think I think that's the right final. I do think that's the right final. As the conversation has, has wore on. And now we must battle. Watkins <laughs> versus Rodri. If this was Salah against Rodri in the final, I think you would choose Salah. But because it's Watkins... I think you've got to fight for Watkins. And I don't think it's I don't think it's right. I don't think it's right. I think the final we've ended up at, you're satisfied, I'm dissatisfied, but we've got to discuss the final. Do City win the league if they don't have Rodri for 38 games? So there's two ways to look at this. There's the 38 games, but then there's like between now and the end of the season. Like, who's got more talent in their squad than Man City? Sure, and it's funny what you said there, because can I shock you? Actually, I think if Salah goes through against Rodri, I, just, I think I'd just give it to Rodri. Quite, quite comfortably because he is the centerpiece. He is the centerpiece. But because because it's Watkins, I know people think I'm being disrespectful to the rest of the Villa squad. I've said on this channel numerous times how I think Villa have got a really, really good squad, but not not that player and that player is, who's so important for them. So Rodri gets injured for the rest of the season, right? So your options in the midfield is John Stones is fit and sort of steps in. And Bernardo Silva plays as a deep line playmaker, so you've got the size and and you know the quality. You've got Kovacic, you can drop deep and pick up the ball as well. You've got Nunez, you've got Rico Lewis, you can bring in as well. With Aston Villa, the other options up front, as a striker who's going to be a target man, also working behind, also going to be unbelievable at finishing, also going to get assists. And I know Rodri steps up and he's clutch at times. But John Duran, Moussa Diaby, you could put forward there, but he's never really played there consistently being the only guy. The rest of that midfield that you might say, go be a striker. None of those players are strikers. For me, honestly, for me, it's Watkins again. No, James, no. We cannot do this. We cannot. 
We cannot. It cannot happen. I hear you. I actually do hear the debate. I know people are, are displeased the fact that we're actually debating this, but I'll explain why we're debating this. Rodri is critical to Manchester City winning the league and Watkins is critical to Villa being where they are this season. Without Watkins, Villa probably aren't in the top four race or some people say title, but without Rodri, City cannot win the league. If we could put it to a poll, but broski, Rodri wins this by a landslide. He is the most important player in the league. I think if Rodri's not there, you go, that's a huge dent. But they're not out of the title race. This, you know, this Man City, they won it three times on the spin. Without him, I know they're not out of it. It's not over. It's not finished. If you lose Watkins, it is finished. There's no way they're anywhere near the Champions League because they are running hot. In terms of the aspirations for what they're trying to do, if you lose Rodri, it's a ma- it's huge. It's enormous. That's why he's in the final. But if you lose Watkins for Villa, it is over. It's over. I'm not crazy here. Well, you're going mad. You're actually going mad. You're going mad. I, I, Go to the poll. <laughs> Go to the poll. I'll lose the poll. I'll probably lose the poll. I, I get it. I like get how important he is, but you've got such a plethora of talent there. Plethora of talent, yeah. If, if if you take Gary Lineker out of match of the day, there's a plethora of talent of other guys who can come in and probably do the job. Me and you could probably step in and do the job. Nobody can do it like him. That's that's why Rodri is that guy. And we've got Watkins to a final, which I think is phenomenal for you, Ollie. You've done unbelievably well to get to this point, but you cannot dethrone Rodri. 50% of the games they've lost without him, bro. If you That's 12 games they've played. They've lost six of them. If you times up by three, you're nearly at a full season. If they lose 50% of a 38-game season, they cannot win the league. Listen to yourself. But they own the ball anyway, don't they? I get it. I get it. He's important. That's why he's in the final, okay? I'm not saying it. Right. It's gone to a poll. I've lost the poll. Rodri, turns out, is the most important player in the Premier League. And well done, Ross Barkley as well. Got a lot further than we thought he would. Go check out the No Ratings podcast. It is in the description. It is Nabade's podcast. It's a great podcast. And go and support our boy, Nabade. My head's on, on Mars at the moment. Thank you very much.